everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a skull with a hat on a candlestick. This is going to be a Halloween craft, so let's get to it. Let me show you what the supplies are going to be. Okay, so on my table I have a variety of items. As you can see, the main uh, items that I'm going to need are these candlesticks. Now, I did get these from the Dollar Tree. You can choose to get them from wherever you want, and I've grabbed two of them to make this a taller candlestick. Now, if you go somewhere else and find one, then you, all you need is one, unless you want to make two of these skulls. I found this plastic skull at the Dollar Tree as well, so I'm grabbing that. If you find one somewhere else, grab it. And then I'm going to use this little plate here. It's a little candle holder, kind of a type of plate. Uh, you don't really need this. You could use a little piece of uh, foam board and cut out a little circle or a little cardboard. Now, to decorate my my little skull candlestick. I'm going to put a hat on him. So I've got this black. Uh, this is called a stiffy felt. It is a stiff felt fabric that I like to use for creating my hats. You can also use another product called Fun Foam. We're going to be using some chenille stems, so I just grabbed some, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that so I can get that out of the way. Uh, any chenille stems, any color, doesn't really matter. They're not really going to show. I grabbed this kind of a cloth it's called a spooky cloth and I've had this since a year the year before you don't need this but I'm going to use it to decorate my hat as well with this so I've pulled that out I've got this little package of little spider rings that I did find at the Dollar Tree last year uh, they do have them again this year uh, you only need one of these if you want to use a little spider on your hat I've got some ribbon and I like this one also from the Dollar Tree grab it from wherever you want what I've got here are some a decorative mesh. So I've got some orange one here, I've got some purple, and then I've also got this black one. And I got all of these from the Dollar Tree. You can get your deco mesh from wherever you want. I also decided to incorporate some tulle in it, or tulle. That's the way that I normally pronounce it. That's the correct pronunciation, by the way. Okay, tulle. And I've got some sparkly one right here. It is purple, it's got a little bit of glitter on it. I've got this orange one that's also got some little bit of glitter on it. And then I found these black ones and they both have spider webs on them and one has orange and one has purple. So I thought I'd use a little bit in combination. So that's what I'm going to use. I also have a uh, assortment here of fall flowers and I'm gonna use purple. I might throw in some orange. So I just got some here that I'm gonna grab from. I'm not gonna use all of that. Something that I don't have here in front of me is going to be, I'm gonna, See if I have some purple glitter and then my Mod Podge. And I also need a little scrap of styrofoam that I don't have here in front of me. I forgot to grab that. I do have some black spray paint because I've got this Fix All Adhesive. It's super. It's uh, from Super Glue brand. Or you can use E6000 or Gorilla Glue, anything that will glue glass. But I'm also going to be using my glue gun and glue sticks because I tend to do that for my crafts because I then take them apart but for this particular one I'll go ahead and do that because I do have some heavy glass there. Okay I've also got these two little candles, little tea lights you can use whichever one you want or use a little string of lights because I do want to put some sort of light inside of them. Now to do that I'm going to need to cut into his little skull eyes and then I'm going to need to cut something down here where I can insert the candle in. And so I need a little craft knife that I haven't pulled out, but I will pull it out eventually. And to put the little little candle in there, I went ahead and I grabbed you this tacky um, kind of a, it's like a clay and it's used for uh, mounting things on the wall if you want. And it could also be used for holding candles onto something so they don't tip over out of like a plate, for example. Uh, but I can also use it on this little candle, this little plastic candle to adhere it into there so that I can then pull it out, turn it off, turn it on, whatever I want. Or if you want to use like little pieces of Velcro, use that as well. Okay, so here I've got these little scraps of like little, uh, little chenille, kind of a, a garland. And I'm going to use some of that. Got those little pieces here. I'm going to need my wire cutters, my scissors, and I did mention that I'm going to use my glue gun, so I need glue sticks for that. Anything else that I can uh, think of, I will just let you know as I go along. So let's go ahead and start putting this stuff together so we can get it spray painted, let it dry, we can then bring it in and decorate it. All right, everyone, we're going to put these glass pieces together. I've removed the uh, stickers and I've given them a little bit of a cleanup just to make sure that I don't have any oils for my hands, especially in this little rim parts, um, the two tops of the candlesticks, if you will, if you're using these particular ones. 
uh, because uh, then the glue won't stick correctly. So I'm going to add some of this super glue. <clears throat> and that's what you want to do. Let's open that. Okay, so I'm going to add some of this super glue. And I'm going to just kind of put that on there like so. Now this is going to take a little longer to dry. And because of that, that is why I, I particularly am using my glue gun. And you can go ahead and do that as well. But make sure you use the other glues. Now, uh, if you're like me and you like to take things apart later, uh, then if you want to go ahead and just use your glue gun, do that. Just be very careful when you're handling it. Okay, so I'm going to put these two together. Like so. There we go. You can wipe off any excess glue. Alright, so there's those two pieces put together. Now I'm going to put the glass uh, uh, candle holder plate here on the top here. This is what we want to create. This this is when we need a, a candle holder like this, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to put that super glue right on here. <clears throat> so I'm going to put plenty of that on there. And then some of my hot glue gun. And that will help have a quicker bond. So now I just want to look at it from the top. And center it as best as I can. Holding on to these because, you know, when you push down, you might push these apart, you know, make them come apart. <clears throat> okay, so that's what we want. And we would ideally let that dry the amount of time that the glue asks for, okay? So we're going to let that put aside. So now we're going to work on our little skull. Remember I told you I wanted to put a little, a little candle inside, one of these. And I thought about it and I thought, this would be great, but I maybe want to put a string of lights instead and you could use battery or the kind that you plug in whichever because this one has a very dim light and even though I'm going to put it you know the back of the skull back here um, it might not be enough to show through the eyes and of course because we're going to spray paint it or I'm going to spray paint it uh, that's probably also going to keep it from maybe glowing through the plastic. So that is something that you might want to decide whether you want to paint the skull part or not. If you don't, I would take this outside, spray paint it, so while it's drying you can do everything else. But I want to paint my skull black. So I've got my craft knife here to do some openings. And I've decided, instead of using this little votive, I'm going to go ahead and use this 20 string light that I also got from the Dollar Tree. You can get like a 10 instead. You can get it from pretty much anywhere, these little strings of light. You can even get battery operated ones rather than a plug-in. So I'm going to use this because I think that if I just push these in, just feed them in there, and it'll just be a cluster of lights in there, it'll be a lot brighter than a little votive candle. So that is going to be up to you. <clears throat> now, this part here, the flat part under the jaw, is going to get glued onto a piece of styrofoam on top of this plate. So that's what I'm going to do with this styrofoam here. I'm going to cut a smaller circle, glue that here, and then this skull will rest on there. Why? Because I'm going to put some little flowers and things. Otherwise, you can skip that part, okay, if you don't want to add any flowers and such. But I'm going to do that, so I'm going to need uh, M to rest there, which means over here I can make a little hole to feed the lights through or in the back make a little hole to slide this in through. But if this is put in there, again, it's not going to have as much light. So I'm going to go with the string of lights. And because I want it to show through the eyes, I need to make some holes here. So I'm just going to take my craft knife and just poke. And poke like an X. I am cutting like an X in there. One across like that, one like that. And then I can go ahead and try to cut off some pieces. And remember, we're going to spray paint this, so that is going to, anything that you scratch off, because some of that black that's on here is getting scratched off, that's going to get spray painted again. Now, if you weren't going to spray paint it, you could just take some craft paint and repaint that. And I'm just pushing in the pieces. So I want a hole right there. Okay, for the lights to show through. You might want to use an X-Acto knife, something smaller. Get a little more uh, control of it, but it's still working for me. I make the little 
if I make a little cross and I can just go and cut out almost a square. The problem is that it pushes in and then it kind of cuts into the other part of the eye that I don't want to cut into. This gives me the, the, the chance to go over here and push this part out because I had kind of pushed it in right there. Okay. That's good. Let me bring this part forward so it's not so pushed back. <clears throat> so just cut some holes into it like that. Okay, now in the back here, and I'm going to do it kind of in the bottom here so the, the cord will kind of come out and be, you know, go across right here, right? So I'm going to do it kind of at the bottom right here. Make a hole where you can, again, just make like a little cross. Oops, kind of gets kind of big, but that's okay. And then just cut off a piece like that. Where you can see the lights through. So let's let's test that out. <clears throat> Put the lights in through there, and then we're gonna take the time and pull them out. So I pushed in all the lights, and I've got the cord coming out like that. <clears throat> Look at that. So you might want this look, but what you would want to do is you want to paint where, you know, any of the black paint got scratched off in here. And then you can see that coming through. I don't know if it's going to come through here once I've got, once I've got it painted. But I know that I can see it through the eyes and that's good enough for me. Because I want his eyes to be glowing. You could do the little nostrils too if you wanted. Maybe some part of the mouth. I don't want to cut it up too much because I think I only want it coming through the eyes. And I think that's going to be good enough for me. Okay, so now I can pull this out. And I'm going to do some measuring before I take this out to paint. Okay, take the lights out. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to be able to make a hat on top of him. I want to make him all fancy like he's been at some sort of uh you know he went somewhere fancy like he was a vampire and he was invited have y'all ever seen bram stoker's dracula okay the vampire in here had this top hat and it was really tall a bit of a brim and then it was you know he looked very nice and he had long locks of hair so that's kind of why i want to use that uh, fabric that i showed you okay so this is our skull and I've already done that and I've got the hole ready so this is ready to be spray painted along with this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the top and I've actually already done that because I happen to have this little little plastic thing. This is in a pack of six and I bought it at uh, also the Dollar Tree and these are those little plastic things that you put under a pot so when you water it you know this will catch any water and it won't get on your table. So that's what this is and there's six inch it says on there. So I was thinking like, is this a good enough size for the brim of a hat? Will this go over? And I was thinking, yeah, this is good. So is my piece of styrofoam. These are all wide enough. So I measured, and this is six, six and a half inches on the little edges here. I don't know where it's six inches, but it says six inches in there. But this is more like six and a half. Well, the inside part is actually like five and five and just a little over five and a half and not even five and three quarters but anyway this is a good measurement to cut out our our hat our brim so I'm gonna take my stiffy felt and <clears throat> now that I know what size is going to be good for my skull I've measured it I'm going to use this as my pattern now you could just uh, cut out a piece of paper in that diameter or if you have a little plate somewhere in your kitchen or something uh, this little candle holder I used this little plate I used it as a you know as a sample first and it wasn't wide enough this is only what five and a half and actually the six and a half is actually a better size and because it can always be trimmed down so it's always better to cut it a little bit bigger but even if you wanted to use that when it just go you know quarter of an inch wider here and there. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to use this to cut out my pattern, but I'm going to take this outside first, spray paint my candle holder, spray paint my, my skull, and make sure your, 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 your paint is okay for plastic and glass, and it is. So just uh, make sure that before you use it, because some spray paints will eat up plastic. Okay, so I'm going to go paint these, and I'll be back, and we'll do the hat. Okay, so since I know that this is the size I'm going to use, I'm going to push this 
as close to the edge as I possibly can here so that I'll know uh, where to start cutting. And I probably should mark it. I have actually a uh, chalk I can probably use for that. Let's do that. Just mark around. This isn't really doing a very good job of marking it. There we go. So just trace something out. see it all right so we'll use that can you see that so then I've got this amount here left over and this is about five and a half inches wide like that and this could be used for the brim if not I actually bought two pieces so I didn't buy them I actually already had this the uh, stiffy foam I actually have two of those so it depends on how tall you want the top hat on your skull, then you might need to buy two of them. Otherwise, one is going to be enough. And I'm going to cut right on the edge just to make sure that I don't cut into any more of this width here, of this piece here. And then once I've got that, I can go ahead and just cut it off so that I can just do this comfortably. And cut around the corner, cut around it, kind of like inside over the chalk mark that I made until you've got your circle cut out. So this is going to be the brim of our hat. Now, when I put it on the skull, let's pretend this is a skull. I don't want it to lay flat on it, okay? I don't want it to be like that all flat on it because, you know, as a skull, you can see that it has a little bit of a curve at the top of the head. I want it to go in some, but because I don't have the skull here with me and I don't know what size that is, I'm just going to prepare this. I'm just going to gently fold, cut, a little nick and then another little nick kind of like a little cross like we did with the eyes we just want a little hole for now okay just so you can put your finger through it for now and once we have our skull then we know how much bigger we can cut this but so that it fits tight so that when we actually put it onto it it'll go not just flat on it but it'll fall into it a little bit okay so then it'll look like it's actually on the head like it should look on a head where your head goes into the hat a little bit so that's what we want we want that look okay so we're gonna have this set aside and I'm gonna go ahead and also mark this because I measured it and if I look here and here it's five and a half but it's I'm gonna use the complete length here of my ruler here and I probably want to bring that chalk stick back out so I'm gonna mark and just make sure it's the same over here yes let's see let's see five and a half right here and then just mark mark and the same over here so then I can just put the straight edge onto it like that on all these little markings and connect them all the way. So now I can trim this piece off. Now that I've cut it off of here, I can probably go ahead and straighten it because it's not cut straight from the, uh, the way that I was cutting it because I have it here in front of the camera so that you can see. No excuses, right? Cut it straight. Okay, we're going to cut it as straight as we can. So there we go. All right, so now we're going to compare it to our brim. So, kind of dirty because some styrofoam bits and then the chalk bits cut on it. Let's throw that in there. Okay, so we're going to do a little circle like that. We're going to bring it around in a circle. Bring this in like that and then decide how how wide you want that and we're gonna make sure we're gonna want that to be wider than the hole we end up cutting on the skull okay so once we've got that hole decided how big we want we can go ahead and know that how big this is going to be but we're going to want some brim so I think see how I have it right now I've got it measured at a pretty good roundness if you will so I'm going to go ahead and decide that that's more or less 
So right where it meets, I'm going to give it an inch and I'm going to cut that off. So I can just trim off that little piece. And as you can see, cutting off the whole length really didn't waste anything because all we have left over is this little tiny little bit. Okay? So now that we've got these two pieces ready, we are also going to want one that's going to go on the very top because once we have this cylinder here, we're going to want to close the top of the hat with something. And we want this to be big enough. So all we need is just to cut out a square. And we'll just cut out whatever rectangle or size we want. Just a piece like that. And we're going to have these three pieces ready. This is going to go to cover the opening at the top of the hat. We're going to glue it down. And then we're going to trim it into a circle. So we want it to be either a square, rectangle, or whatever piece you can. That's at least as white as your, the circle that you cut off for the brim, okay? Just make sure you got those prepared. You don't need to make it into a circle if you want to cut it into a circle. Cut it the same size as this part and then we can trim it off. Do not try to cut it the size of the opening right now because when you get to gluing it, somehow it doesn't match up. So we're going to leave it into a square and I'll explain that when we get to that point. Okay, so we got all these little pieces ready to build our hat. The next thing I want to do <coughs> is cut a piece of styrofoam because I just need a little small piece where I can stick some stems of the, uh, a little bit of, just a tiny bit of flowers, but the mesh pieces and the tool that I'm going to make, they need to get inserted into something. Now we know the, the area of the uh, skull, the bottom of the skull was very small, so we just need a little small area. So I'm just going to mark it with, let me see, let me grab, uh, let me grab a Sharpie right here. You could do a little square if you want. I'm going to do like a little circle. Let's see how big that is. Uh, it's about three and a half. So let's do that. Three and a half. And you can use that same craft knife to cut it out. Trim that off. But I have a little a little knife that I got from the Dollar Tree and this is what I use as my craft knife when I'm cutting styrofoam. So this doesn't have to be perfect because it is going to get covered. So I'm really just going around and if I had my cutting mat I would cut on it but I don't so that's why I have it up in the air right now. And just follow your marker like that. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now that we've got that prepared we have all our pieces right there. All right, so while I was telling you the supplies, I also mentioned that I'm going to need some glitter. This is completely optional. You don't need glitter, so you just need a glue that will dry clear. I'm using Mod Podge, but you can use a white Elmer's glue that will dry clear. Any glue that you can brush on. And I've got some glitter here, and I've got this kind of a black, kind of almost purpley glitter. I got this at uh, Target, it's, and I got it where they have all the little craft items. It's called sparkling glitter. Well, glitter is sparkly to begin with, so I don't know why it's called that. Okay, so you just use whatever glitter you want to use. If you want to use glitter, I've got a little brush to brush on the, to brush the glue on. Okay, so like I said, you can use, you can use some chenille stamps. So just any, any chenille stamps are not really going to show. We're going to take our pieces of a deco mesh. Excuse the noise. And I'm going to cut six inch pieces. So I just want to measure it on here. This is a 12 inch mark 18, so I'm just using that. And I'm just going to cut them. And I'm just using my, my scissors. You can use a rotary cutter if you want. And this is, this is really going to depend on how many you're going to need, are going to depend on how many you need to completely go around here and how much you want to like embellish it and decorate it. So I think I'm going to do, let me see, I'm going to go ahead and roll this one up because that's what we're going to do with them. We're going to create little curlies like that. But before I finish that off, I want to add also uh, like some tool to it. So I'm going to grab, let's see, my orange one for example. So I'm going to coordinate the, maybe the orange with the black, maybe the, this one I want to coordinate it with the, uh, the purple, the, the, uh, 
spider web you want and maybe the orange with the purple. It just depends on what you grab and what you want to use, okay? Maybe you just want to use one color and then you don't have to worry about buying all these like I did. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with the tool. Let me trim off this little piece here because it's got like a little adhesive thing there. And then also cut a six inch bit. So you have that and you can roll it up. And just like you roll this one up, grab it together, put this one on top of that one, something like that if you wish. And I like to cut these into little, um, my, my uh, chenille stems, I cut them in half and then in half again. So I have four pieces, so they're basically like three inch pieces. Um, and especially for this, it's not gonna be so big. Uh, you don't need it to tie around anything else. We just need little pieces. Um, wrap that around and then we're going to wrap the two ends together and we're going to want those to be able to insert into the styrofoam like that okay so it all just depends on how many you need to go around and we'll find out once I got these formed so I think I want to try and get like um, purple and orange like I said and then maybe this uh, I'm sorry black and the orange and then maybe this purple with this black and maybe the orange with uh, this purple tool. So I'll get you know that color, then this one, and then this one, and then I'll repeat it. So I'm kind of looking at it like if I was gonna put three of these together and I want them like really tight. So three, three. So maybe five, if I was gonna say, this is like five sections, just so I can show you what I'm, what I'm thinking. This is not important for you to worry about. So let's say I'm gonna, divide this into maybe like let's see how maybe six sections one two three four five six maybe yeah sort of kind of the same and in each of these sections there's going to be three so you know one of each so then I'm going to need six bundles of this one six bundles of the the purple and black and six pumples six pumples six bundles of the orange and purple that's if you decide to choose like three different colors and if you decide to do you know two well let's see I divided into three I'm sorry there's three in each one and I divided into six so that makes 18 bundles you're either gonna make 18 bundles all the same like this one or you could do nine if you, nine of each if you do two colors or six of each if you do three colors okay does that help you? I hope it does. Okay, so I'm going to continue by making all my little bundles. So I'm going to make six of this one, six of this one, and six of this one. All right, and I'll be back once I've got all these little bundles made. All right, so I'm back really quickly. I need one more to do, but there is something that I made a mistake in the way that I told you how to make these. So I just want to correct that. Um, I told you to roll both of these up. Like you could roll this one up, the mesh. And then I told you to roll up the uh, the one with the uh, the tool, but on the tool you're actually just going to grab it from the middle and gather it down the center, like that, and then just place it on top of the other one, and then just wrap it around just as I told you. So that's the mistake that I made is that I told you to wrap to roll up the tool, and you weren't going to do that. You were going to just gather it, and because I was looking at it and I thought it looks kind of funny. I don't know what it was about it that I didn't feel like it looked like other times that I've done the work. Uh, so, and then I realized it was because I rolled up the tool and it didn't look pretty, but now like that, gathered up, it looks a little bit better. Okay, so I've got my my uh, six bundles of each of my, the three colors that I had to combine. So there we are. Now, like I said, if you only have, you know, one color of uh, deco and one color of tool, or uh, you don't want to use any tool, you just want to use deco mesh, then I uh, just use, uh, you're going to do 18 possibly if you do the sizes that I'm doing, you know, your little circle. Um, otherwise, just do double that so that you can do, you know, two pieces of mesh here. Or maybe you only want to use a tool, depending what you find, okay? Maybe you want to use a piece of ribbon in there instead. Okay, so now this is not by any means probably all that I'm going to cut up. Once I have my skull on here, I'm going to see if I can see any of this, uh, of the white of this the uh, styrofoam and I'm probably going to make some more little bundles to tuck in there here and there and um, I also have that little uh, little uh, 
chenille kind of a garland. Now let me tell you where I got this from. Now if you go to the Dollar Tree, you'll see the little the little witches hats, maybe some little cat plastic forms, and they're covered in this. And I've taken this off of the witch's hat to then fill her up with all of this. So this is just leftover little bits that I have from that. Or you could actually also even find a garden like this. I'm going to use that to cover the styrofoam on the bottom edge. I want to put that around the bottom edge like that. Okay, and then I'm going to put the, the mesh tool in there. Maybe I'll put some on the upper edge as well. So that's an idea to kind of cover up as much of that styrofoam. So that's what I want to use of this for. Okay, if you don't find this, let me show you something else. Uh, let me grab it. Okay, so I have this like tubing and I got this from the Dollar Tree and they do have it in orange and they have it in black. They have it in different colors. Every time they put out all this stuff, they put out some of this. You could also use some of that to do some covering up here. Okay, little dots of glue here and there and that'll hold it down onto your styrofoam okay okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go outside and check on my uh, candlesticks and my skull and see how well they're doing the weather's not so great outside for a complete drying so I might be back in a couple of hours or so and finish this off this is gonna be a really cute little um, little craft that we're gonna create okay I'll be back there's my skull that I painted with a spray paint and uh, the candle holder <clears throat> All right, so if any of it gets scratched off, that's actually fine because it might look kind of neat that way. But I'm gonna go and take some of this Mod Podge or you can take an Elmer's white glue or Aileen's tacky glue. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to water down a little bit. You have your Elmer's glue, do the same. So then I'm just gonna use that and I'm just gonna spray it, or not spray, but brush it onto my candlestick here. And Okay, just do that, and not only that, but it actually gives the the uh, candlestick a little bit of a, a glossy look. And if you don't want that glossy look, use a mat. But because we're using glitter on it, I mean, you know, really, I mean, what's the point, right? Making it a mat. Next section, I'm just gonna keep brushing it on all the way around, and right here on the edge of the plate. I don't have to worry about the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about the top. That's gonna get a hit in quite a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna continue putting this glue all over it, and covering it with some glitter and I shall be back all right so I've gotten the glitter on there uh, just so that in case you're wondering I mentioned that this glitter was from Target uh, it's sparkling a glitter the color on it does say black magic on it so in case you're wondering what glitter I'm using that's what I'm using I did also have a little a bottle of some acrylic black paint so that I could touch up any spots that maybe got scratched up on there and I had a little little spot on the chin in the front that I kind of scratched so I just used my finger got a little bit of paint and dabbed that on there I have one over here as well uh, on the back of the skull here but this is where the hat's gonna go and I also didn't put any glitter there really because it's gonna get covered up a lot so you just pretty want to much pretty much want to do like the forehead or face and so forth and I didn't do like real deep into the eyes I just did around the edge here you could also leave out the nostrils and maybe even the teeth if you don't want to glitter them up Anyway, so I've had this in front of this little mirror drying. And so now I'm going to put these items out of the way. I want to put this styrofoam right here. And it's almost the same size as this little indentation in my plate. And I have to be really careful with this because uh, since it's not quite dry, this kind of wants to come apart. Now you want to keep in mind that if you use a hot glue only, uh, this can come apart very easily because it's glass and it's cold, uh, non-porous. So the glue will just kind of float in there between. It's not really holding things. So you want to make sure you use an E6000 or something like that. Now, I've already mentioned before in past videos, I use a hot glue gun only for the purpose of my video. This did come apart on me because the other glue wasn't completely dry. So I ended up having to glue this again. So just be very careful with it when you're handling it. I'm going to round this off a little bit more or you shave off a little bit more off of it. Because I do want it to fit in here. And I'm not going to worry about the amount of little little uh, bundles that I made because they're all going to fit in there and like I said I was probably going to end up having to make more because I do want to cover up the styrofoam and okay I feel like that's good enough to put on here again I, you want to use some some good glue to get that on there but I'm going to go ahead and just use my hot glue gun let me turn this fan over so it doesn't melt or dry this yet because I'm not ready to have this dry on me 
And of course, when you get it on glass, like I said, it's kind of a cold uh, material. And it's non-porous, so the glue dries way faster on it than it does if you were putting on some other, like a plastic or cardboard or something like that. I'm just going to look at it. It's kind of centered. No big deal. Okay, so then the next thing I want to do is I want my skull on there. And I want the front part of the skull that's flat right here, right underneath him right here. I want that to be glued down. As you can see, the part of this is going to go up a, a little bit. And then this part is not going to be held up by anything. So we're going to hold it there a while to make sure that it does get dried on. Now, if any of that glitter falls off, you can just brush it on afterwards or glue it all together first and then add um, your glitter. Okay, and I don't care if any of it squirts out because um, it's just styrofoam. It's all going to get covered anyway. Okay, so we want that to get on there. Nice. See that? Okay, since um, this is probably the the best part to go ahead and get this string of lights in there or maybe put it in there before you actually glue it down so that you can kind of turn this around and be able to see where you made your little hole I can I can feel it right there so that I know that that's where it is so I'm going to start inserting the string of lights in there okay so I tested out the lights and I wanted to make sure they were working and they did I don't want to show that to you right now. I wanted to show you at the very end. I had to pull them out a little bit because I was looking through the little eyes and I noticed that more light was on one side. So I pulled them out and I pushed them back in. And then I used the little pliers to kind of reach in there and kind of maneuver them. And then I also used my little, my little tiny little scissors to cut a little bit more of the hole. And then I ended up touching up with some more black paint, a little bit more glitter where I kind of scratched it off. So make sure you keep those items handy near you so that you can use that. Okay, so now I want to cover the styrofoam with this fuzzy bit. So I'm going to put some glue at the bottom edge here, one little area at a time. So we can get that on there. Push it in. Get it around. This meets up back here. And I'll just let the little big kind of cover up the styrofoam that's back here. Okay, so I want to probably put some on the very top edge right along the, the scalp here. Just to tuck it in as I go along. Right along the edge of the scalp, right underneath. And we just kind of push it in under there. Cover it, that covers up the styrofoam there. Right under his chin. There you go. And I'll get glued in there. Watch your fingers. So we got that covering the top edge. Okay. I'll need another little piece up here under the chin because I did tuck in that other part pretty deep in there. So I'm get another little piece. Add some extra right there in that edge of the styrofoam. Okay, so now I'm going to put the little bundles that I made and I'm going to push these into the styrofoam. Now, initially I wanted to put some hot glue on them, but because I'm going to be pushing in like that, I feel like I might burn my finger, so I'm just going to push it as much as I can. And then if you want, add a little bit of glue to just coordinate them. And as you can see, those markings that I made with the Sharpie, I mean, I'm not seeing those anymore, so you kind of have to just go according to what size you make. Now, if you want to make the markings on the side, that way you can see them. That might help you. Okay. Got that one in there. Look how that's looking. Isn't that kind of elegant around his neck? I love it. Okay, you guys, I'm going to continue alternating these as I go around and fitting as much as I can in there. Maybe I'll get all 18 pieces. Maybe I won't. If I have any left over, that's fine because I can use it on the hat 
or like I said, HT might not be enough. We might need more to put on the hat, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, let me finish putting that all the way around and I'll be back. All right, here is the candle holder with just the skull on it. And of course, all the uh, mesh around the edges there. That looks so pretty. Actually, this by itself, just like that, can be a finished product. So you can do that if that's all you care to see. If you want to make it a little more spooky or a little more elegant, maybe you just want to use just black mesh, a little bit of the uh, uh, tool that has the uh, the spider webs. Now they have this this one with the spider webs. They have it in purple and they also have it in silver. I used the orange because I thought it coordinated. Bring a little orange in here. Okay, so now we want to do the hat. This is going to be the brim that goes on his head. Now remember I said that we're just going to do a little bit of an opening because we do kind of want it to go onto his head. We don't want it floating like that flat on top of the, you know, one little curve up here of his head. We want it to go in a little bit. So I'm going to start cutting in a little bit of time. And I'm not even going to cut. I'm just going to cut the slits further in. Okay, can you see this where I've just cut like that? Because it's probably easier. That's all I've done to cut so far. So you just want to cut a little bit at a time. And if you have to make more slits, cut right down the middle of each of those little triangle pieces. Cut some more, keeping in mind to stay the same amount around here. Don't cut too far. And then we're going to see, is that going a little bit? We have to cut a little bit more. And you're just going to keep doing this until you get it to actually go a little bit over the head a bit more. See how much bigger of a hole I'm getting by doing that. And that's going in. I just want it to go in. I'm going to get the this other side to go in there. I think that's good, you guys. Because I want it to curve in and fit. So what I'm doing, let me turn this around. See how, see how these little bits kind of poke upward? These little bits poke upward because I'm pushing it down. So what I'm going to start doing is that if I pick this up, one of these folded up, right on the bottom edge here, I'm going to put glue so it glues down onto him. And then I'll do the next one and the next one until I get all the way around. But I'm not going to try and push it all down at the same, all at once. I'm going to do a little bit at a time, let this dry so it's right where I want it. So I'm going to pick this front one on there, put glue on there, right on his forehead, right there, okay, and I can do the second one, and then the other one on this side, this is actually folded as well, so I'm just going to take a long piece, about seven inches this is now this is very optional if you don't like this don't do it okay I wanted to take this and it's going to gather a little bit like that and I'm going to see if I like that look and I want it tucked under the hat so I don't I don't want to glue this back part down yet. Let me decide if I like that. I kind of don't, you guys. I want it to be like hair, but I'm not liking it. So I'm not going to use that. No. Okay, we're going to leave that part out. And then I got some little scratches back here, so I'll just touch them with some paint. So we won't worry about that. Keep an eye on your wire too because it could scratch up on here and pull that off. Okay, let's do this back one here. Pull it down and then do these side ones. Now 
it. I want that glue on it. Okay, now now that I've got them on there, you can trim off the little the little peaks if you want. No big deal. Okay, so now we're gonna take this one and remember this is gonna be our our cylinder that was gonna go around our hat. And remember, I told you don't don't cut it too short because we don't know what size of cylinder we want. And I did kind of a more or less you know measurement at first, so I'm gonna want this to go around it. I want to make sure that it covers all these little slits that I made. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it down on here. Usually I make my little cylinder first and then I put glue and glue it down like that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it And I just want the little edge of the bottom to glue down. So I'm putting the center right there in the front. And then we're going to cover that up with a little bit of ribbon. So don't worry about that glue showing on the other side of it. So we're just going to hold it, let that dry, and then we'll curve the other this part. And then we'll worry about curving the other side. But first we're just going to hold this and let that dry. Okay, so I just want to make sure I tell you that as you're pushing this down to glue it on there, you just push up on the little edge here to make sure it's touching and that it is gluing down down onto it. And then push down and lift up the brim here so the edge. Glues, okay? Okay, so then we're going to bring it all the way around here in the back. This flop, flap here, bring it all the way around, and then we're going to glue it to this here so that it stays in that cylinder form. And then we can finish gluing those little edges. I'm just going to add a little dot of glue here to hold it for me for a little bit. So right here where these are closing, I put a little bit of glue there just to hold it, to help me go hold it like that. And that helps me then glue this bottom edge here. Any more glue. Now remember I said some glue will kind of uh, get on the brim. That's okay, we're going to cover that up with ribbon. So now we want to put that glue in there. Bring that little brim upward. So it'll glue to that edge. And then I can glue it down the seam. And try to keep from trying to pull those webs of of glue off right now because all that's going to happen is that they're just going to stick more. They'll stretch and then they'll just stick and they become skinnier and they're harder to pull off and then just stick to the foam. So let them dry before you attempt to, you know, do this and start pulling them off. Okay, let me do the top edge now to close that up. Okay, and that's what I've done. Okay, we're going to let that dry, and then I'll be back, and we will close up the top. Okay, you're probably wondering what. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I want to cover the top here of the hat. And as you can see, it's not quite rounded off. So I want to put some glue on here and I'm going to kind of like curve it a little bit with my fingers. And then I'm going to put this on top and then just let this glue and then just push in whatever I have to push in to kind of round it off and just hold it till it's glued down. And once that's dry, then I can trim around the edge. But first, 
let's go ahead and get some glue and I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a little section up here in the front and I'm going to make sure that whenever I put this glue on here that if it's going to drip it'll drip to the inside and not the outside edge of my hat I'll just put little dots like that also before I came back I also made sure that any little spots where it looked like it was little gaps I just put some glue in there okay so I'm gonna push this in this little corner here because it's kind of not wanting to be round so, I think it's doing pretty good okay looks like a graduate graduation hat right now okay so now I just want to do the next little section over and remember any glue that will drip make sure that it drips on the inside edge and not on the outside but here we go got that on there okay so then you just want to go in and I'm just going to go in as close as I can just start trimming some of this off And trying to get as close as I can to the edge as I trim it, but not too far in. Okay, just as close as I can as I trim around. And then you'll notice that maybe some little spots lift off. So that's where you want to put some glue. And trim it a little bit at a time, you guys. Don't get too far ahead because you might cut in too far in the edge. If you want to look underneath it, and trim that way. Okay, just keep going around, but just do a little bit at a time, like I said. Let's see, I've only got this much more trim off. I'll just go slowly. And being that it's black, it's kind of like really hard to tell, so make sure you don't get up too close. It's better that it's a little bit big and then you step back and look at it and if it needs a little trim go for it so there you go there's the hat the top of it and it looks like a big elegant top hat and that just depends on how high you want it to go but I wanted it to be really high okay so I'm going to take some of this um, bit of, um, well, the last bit that's left on my roll, I guess, of uh, the tool. One side's like more glittery than the other. This side is much more glittery. So this is going to be my right side. I'm just going to like scrunch it up a little bit. I'm going to want like about so much tail. And then the rest of it, just scrunch it up a little bit. And that's what's going to go around my hat here at the bottom. Okay, so just scrunch it up as thin as you want. Now, before you put this on, if you choose to go ahead and brush some of that same Mod Podge that you did on the candlestick and on the skull and sprinkle glitter on it, go for it. At first I thought I would do that, but I have changed my mind. And I'm going to leave it like that because a lot of the glitter from this tool actually sticks to that. To the hat the felt okay so I'm just gonna knot it back here as you can see I didn't have to glue it or anything just tie it around but if you don't want it to move little dots of glue here and there so it stays kind of like scrunched down a little bit okay and I'm just going to knot it and I don't have to like pull on it tight because I don't want to squeeze that hat and deform it any more than it already is. I'm just going to make a little knot here and then I'll just trim the excess right there making sure the much glittery side is on the outside. You could do this so that it's knotted and it's hanging off the side instead of the back. I'm going to take the ends 
Let me trim a little bit more because this one's got like a bit of a fold here. I'm going to trim a little bit more. Okay, we don't need those pieces. And there we go. That's how we want that. Now, if you want to make more of these little curly cues, you can also put them on the top here, and that could be your brim of the hat if you prefer. I'm kind of liking it just like that and not putting any of this up here. Instead, I'm just going to get some flowers and a little spider. Let's see, what else did I grab? That was it. I'm going to grab my little spider, and I think I'm going to use a purple one. And then what I'll do is I'll just trim off the ring part. By the way, I was using my wire cutter because I mentioned that we needed wire cutters. I was using it to cut my chenille stems, okay? So I'm going to use that again to cut off the hard plastic part that creates a ring on that, on the back here, because we don't need that on there. And then now we can go ahead and use that to glue anywhere we want on our hat. But first, I'm going to get some flowers, so I'm going to clear out some of the stuff here. I need to make a bow with this ribbon, which by the way, we don't even need now because it's really pretty like that. So what do you think? Should I incorporate that in there as well, seeing that we don't really have any white on there? I could just use more of the tulle because I do have uh, a little bit of this. I can make little loops or a couple of loops. That could be a nice, ooh, actually that's going to work out just perfect, guys. Look, we're going to eliminate using some ribbon. Now, this happens a lot to me when I'm doing crafts. Those of you who watch my videos, you know that. Those of you that don't <laughs> and that feel like you want to tell me, maybe you should plan out your craft before. No, I, I do plan out my craft, but I still change my mind. And sometimes plans don't always work, so you got to figure out a different way, especially if something breaks on you. So I'm folding this to the middle but overlapping the ends over each other right in the center and then I'm just going to gather 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 like that to make a bow like that get to a little piece of chenille stem and I feel like that doing it this way gives those of you who are following along um, just different ways of doing things so if you would prefer to use a ribbon to tie around and then make a bow. That will look beautiful, of course. But I feel like, you know, the stool does the job. And I'm going to fold in the little ends of the stool. And then I can put some glue on them. Let's turn this around like that. Put lots of glue on that little piece of chenille. And then just glue it to that knot that we made back here. And look at that. We have a really nice bow, and like I said, if you want to tie it on this side and have the bow on the side, that works well, or just as nice. Or if you want to put another thin ribbon on here, get more little tails coming off, you can do that as well. It just depends on how much you want to put on there. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my little work area, pick out the flowers that I want to use, and the leaves. I'm going to show you the bow first. There we go. Once it's dry on there, I would like try to get my hand in there and kind of separate it a little bit. Kind of open it up and poof it a little bit. It's not really going to stay very well because it's not wire edged, but at least it opens up the tool a little bit, poofs it up. Okay, but we want it to dry and it's not quite dry. So let's leave it alone for a little bit. I'll be back. Okay, so once again, this could be the finished product just like that if you put a hat and just a little bit of ribbon around it but I want to put some florals and I want to do kind of like a cascading floral so I want to put some flowers up at the top here and a little bit kind of coming off the edge and then just a little bit of a cascade going down so I went ahead and I grabbed these I do have more but I'm just gonna grab these for now and I'm just gonna use my wire cutters just to start snipping off the stems and I know I'm not gonna need them very long so I'm just gonna cut them off as short as I can because I might just end up getting rid of the whole stem. I don't know. So just little bits like that. So I'm going to take some of these and I did like the leaves. So I'm going to take the little plastic off and see now I have this kind of an open leaf like that. So what you do is you can just trim them 
and have them be separate little leaves like that. So we'll work with that. And these are two on each of these, so I can just pull off. I didn't even need the stem on that one because this one doesn't come apart if I pull it off. Okay, so I'm going to put some flowers up here. So I'm going to put this one kind of sitting on the edge here, off to the side of the front. Put that one right in there. Okay, so I'm going to get another one and do the same thing right next to it. Like so. And then I'll trim off some more and I'll put these little leaves on the side because I'll probably use them. And you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you cut off stems? I wasn't sure what they were like yet until I started uh, trying to pull them apart. Okay, so I'm going to get this nice big open one and put that at the top. And I'm going to trim off some of the plastic back here. I should have my wire cutters for that. Put glue back here. Put one right in the middle. And I laid it down kind of on its side so that it's kind of facing forward to the front. And then I'm going to grab another one. Again, trimming off a little bit of stem in the back. Leaving a little bit there because we don't want to completely cut it flat because then the parts will come off apart. So put some glue and hold it all together. I'm going to put another one. Kind of... Now tilt it this way so we can see it off to the side. And I want my cluster to start going downward this way, so I don't want to put any more this way. I might put some going down this way, but first I'm working on one side then the other. And mainly because I do have this seam here where I put this, so I might want to cover that up. Okay, there's the front. Yeah, right here's the front. My bow's off to the side a little bit, and that's okay. That's all right. Okay, so now I'm start filling it up with this one. Yeah, let's do that. Put some glue on it. Stick it right there, right in the middle of those. And I'm just going to be filling in between the other ones with this uh, globe, global flower. I forgot what it said, globe or global. Okay, I think it said globe. Tuck that in, and don't worry about little spots showing because that's where we're going to tuck in some leaves, okay? Like little spots like right here that's empty. Don't worry, because we're gonna tuck in some leaves in there. Okay, so we can take leaves like this little bundle, I'm just going to cut a little bit off of that stem, bend the stem, put a guess here so we have like a, a little L right there where I bent it. So on the bottom of that little part that I bent, I can put glue so that'll stick to the flat part of the hat. Oops, I just dropped that flower. I'll just grab another one. No big deal. That wasn't dry yet. I'll just grab another one and then I'll go save that one in a little while. Put it back where that other one should be. Okay, so that's what you're seeing so far. And then I can take some of these leaves that I've cut, cut separately, a little bit of glue in the back, and then just reach underneath these and tuck that end in there underneath the petals, just tuck that little leaf in there, right under there, and then these petals will just hide that edge. Okay, so you want to do that? Just build. Now going down this way. Let me get another bit of some leaves. Cut some more. So I'm going to put some of this. See back here between these two flowers right there on the top there put a leaf there I'm gonna grab another leaf and tuck it in there as well just so that I'm covering the black and I'm pushing it way way in there between them just to cover the black felt that you can see through them I'm going to 
take the leaves from these. The, the I think it was what the the black eyed Susan, and just go down. Make a little bit of glue here, so this one curves downward on that seam. Oh my goodness, all these glue webs. See what I'm doing? Because there's a seam right here, and I want to cover it with leaves. I'm going to have it glue leaves kind of like they're falling down the edge there, or like there's a stem there. That covers that up. See? That covers that up. You see that some of them are tilted in a different direction? Just so they're all going straight down. Okay. Now we want to start building our cluster going down. See that? Okay, get a couple more. Take it right there. Now we're going to get the leaves and do the same thing. Reach under, tuck one in. like one of these kind of behind the petals here going up now I'm gonna take the globe flower again Let me put those scissors over there so I can stop grabbing them trim off that little stick I'm gonna stick one right in here in there and just hold it and then I'll stick another one right up here okay I'm going to add these leaves as well but I think we're going to do the same thing I'm just going to take them off the plastic and then just trim them off and just tuck them in wherever I can just to make my, my bouquet full and then wherever we have a little space, we're going to put these little orange flowers. That is what the cluster is looking like. Okay. Let me just pull that off. Little clusters, cut them off. That one big cluster. There we go. Cut it off. Okay, now I can take these and just put glue. Well, over the bottom there on it and just tuck them in somewhere where you know it's touching some some felt of the hat. Can you see that where I tucked it in? Okay, I'm going to turn this off because I'm about to run out of battery. All right, everyone, I've gone ahead and I finished it up by filling in with a little orange flowers here and there. And then I put that little spider right here up in the front, just as I thought I would at the very beginning. So let's light this up and plug it in here and there you can see the eyes glowing and making this a spooky skull he's got a hat and he's on a candlestick it looks quite elegant actually i forgot that i had dropped a flower and i could have glued that in but i'm just going to put it there to the side so let me know what you think here's the sides the top and there we go everyone I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up. I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and uh, leave a nice comment down below. Let me know what you think of my skull with hat on a candlestick. Let me know if you're going to be making this or if it inspires you to make something a little bit different. Where would you stop? Would you have stopped just at the mesh and the skull or just a simple hat? left off the flowers or are you going to go ahead and just go all out like I did or maybe even go further out okay you can find a bigger skull make a bigger hat and make this really grand but I think this looks really lovely it's got a little bit of spook with that little bit of light coming through those eyes look at that Ooh, yes all right everyone make sure you share with their on your social medias and as always enjoy a little side note, everyone, before I do uh, end this video, I just want to give my thoughts and my prayers to those of you who are in 
uh, the way or have been in the way and uh, um, I hope you find yourself safe from the Hurricane Dorian and for those of you who are still in its path I uh, hope that you find your way out to safety and you know don't take things for granted grab just a few things and get out don't let yourself uh, get caught if this becomes something really really bad so this is just my prayers and my thoughts for all of you for those of you who have already been uh, hit by it and struck by it uh, I hope that you're safe and that things will be alright that's it everyone